Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here, and today I'm doing a response to um, Lou Rock TV. This is my first ever video response. I have been a, a subscriber to this channel for a little while, but not long enough to where I want to be considered for any of the prizes or anything. I'd rather leave that for somebody who's done more um, contributing to his channel. Um, I do watch some of his videos. I like uh, that he's a Yankees fan very much, and I'm um, also a Clemente fan, so those are two great uh, things that I certainly uh, like about him, and also he's very family-oriented, which is really cool as well. And top it off, he's got a great collection. So um, certainly look forward to watching uh, more of his videos. Um, love seeing everybody else's lineup, so I thought I'd put my own together. So really the theme of my lineup, and you know, baseball's a team sport, so I built my lineup around uh, winners, guys that have all won World Series championships. Every one of my players in my lineup's won a World Series. Every single one of them has been an MVP in the World Series, assuming that award was around, and for the guys I have, it was. So um, the other one, I'm sorry, an MVP in the World Series or a Championship Series MVP. So they're big-time contributors on their teams, uh, great players. Uh, they have to be you know, elite-type players or leaders on their teams um, to be in my lineup to, um, for consideration. So here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you who I would have here, and if I don't have the rookie card, I'd tell you, who I would put here in their place. Um, but here we go with the first guy. It's Ricky Henderson, the leadoff hitter on my team. He's a starting center fielder. He won um, uh, two World Series. He played in 60 playoff games. He was an American League Championship MVP. Stole 33 bases in those 60 playoff games. He had a, a 284 average and scored 47 runs. And when he won his MVP in 89 against uh, the Blue Jays in the Championship Series, he was just a force in that series and just a pleasure to watch really enjoy that. And he'd be my guy no matter whose rookie carries I had. He's the greatest leadoff hitter ever. Can't think of a better guy to lead off my lineup. Next up, this guy here, um, Derek Jeter. He's my shortstop no matter what rookie card I have. He won five World Series, 158 playoff games, a season's worth of playoff games. I know they played more when he played, but the Yankees were a force every year during his time. Uh, 308 batting average, 111 runs in the playoffs, 20 home runs, 838 OPS, World Series MVP. Definitely the guy I want batting two in my lineup. My third hitter here um, is close. I consider Willie Stargell pretty strongly, but Steve Garvey's my guy. He won one World Series, 55 playoff games, 338 batting average in those games, 11 home runs, 32 runs, 910 OPS, two-time NLCS Championship Series MVP. He also was a two-time All-Star MVP and, of course, a National League MVP as well. So he's my guy at first base, gold glove first baseman as well. Um, if I had to pick an all-time guy, that would be Lou Gehrig. Uh, but I don't have his rookie card, so, uh, but he's my third guy in the lineup here. Banton cleanup, right field, none other than the great one, Mr. October Reggie Jackson. He won five World Series, played in 77 playoff games, 278 average, hit 18 home runs in those games, 48 RBIs, 885 OPS, two-time World Series MVP. He's the guy in right field. If I was picking an all-time guy, it'd be Babe Ruth, of course. Don't have his rookie card, never will. But uh, Reggie's my guy. Batting fifth, Mike Schmidt. All right. He was tough. I almost considered Stargell here, too, because I had a DH spot. But I gave it to Schmidt. Even though um, he, he did win a World Series MVP, which helped. And he won a World Series, of course, with the Phillies. 236 batting average, though, in his 36 playoff games with four home runs and 16 RBIs. And a 690 OPS, which is the lowest of any player on my list. But I gave it to Schmidt anyway just because, um, you know, weighing the fact that he did win that World Series uh, MVP with everything else, um, he'd be a guy I could count on in my lineup. So I, I put him in there. This was the guy I was going to put in over him, though, but I did end up putting him in as my uh, DH, George Brett. George Brett was a much better playoff performer than Schmidt was. Um, and George Brett had played in, um, let's see, uh, 42 playoff games. He won one World Series, 337 batting average, 10 home runs, 23 RBIs, 1.023 OPS, the highest of any player here on profiling, ALCS MVP as well. Great George Brett. Next up we have um, at left field. Well, I wanted to add, if I had to pick another DH, uh, probably would be Roberto Clemente over Brett, but man, it would be close because Clemente was a great playoff performer too. Puckett's my left fielder um, on this team. He's batting seventh. 
And he didn't play as quite as many playoff games. He played in 24 playoff games, but he won two World Series. He was an ALCS MVP. He batted a 309 with five home runs, 16 RBIs, had an 897 OPS. I can count on Puckett and my team to deliver. Just a great player, um, no doubt about it. If I was picking an all-time um, outfielder, um, I'd put him at left field. It would be Mickey Mantle, no doubt in my mind, um, over Mays or Aaron. Mantle had 18 home runs in the World Series. Um, 40-something RBIs. I mean, he was he was the guy for the Yankees at that time. And, I, you know, I hear, you know, some people say Willie Mays was better. Well, maybe he was, but uh, who had the better career, though? Mickey Mantle had the better career. Mickey Mantle won seven World Series. Baseball's a team sport. And he played with great players. Guess what? Willie Mays played with great players, too. Last time I looked, he had Orlando Cepeda, uh, Juan Marichal, and uh, Willie McCovey stretch playing on his teams. So I think they had as many good players as the Yankees had. Mickey Mantle was a big-time performer. He's going to be my uh, left fielder if I had an all-time team. Don't have his rookie. Probably never will have it, though. Next up, at catcher, uh, Johnny Bench. And uh, I would maybe consider Bear here if I had his rookie. But Bench is my guy here with two World Series, 45 playoff games, uh, 266 batting average. He even stole six bases, though, to go along with 10 home runs and 20, 20 RBIs. Was a World Series MVP as well, so he's my backstop. And here I got uh, Pete Rose, got to be on my team at second base. Picked him over Joe Morgan. He'd be my second baseman no matter what. Um, Morgan was a, a very good player to getting teams to the playoffs, but his numbers were not really good in the playoffs, so Rose was much better. Uh, Rose had a, a 321 batting average in 67 playoff games. He won three World Series. He had an 828 OPS, uh, was a World Series MVP, also hit five home runs. Going with Pete Rose, he's my guy. And then I just had one starting pitcher. If I had one game I needed to win, it'd either be this guy or Sandy Koufax I'd have on the mound in that game. And uh, probably would go with him here, Bob Gibson, with two World Series, 7-2 and two record in uh, the playoffs, 1.89 ERA, two World Series MVPs, 0.889 whip, 92 strikeouts in 81 innings. Bob Gibson is the guy I'm giving the ball to if I need to win a game. And then, if needed, if I got to get a guy to shut the door um, with Gibson pitching, probably won't need him. But if I do, I'm going with Raleigh Fingers right here. Um, he won three World Series. He was a World Series MVP. He had uh, nine saves in the playoffs with a 2.35 ERA. So uh, Raleigh's my guy. Here is my line up here and again I'm going in with all winners because uh, that's what baseball is we play the games to win them as uh, Herm Edwards <laughs> said in an interview one time everybody have a great night